Hi everybody, this is God Sad for the Sad Truth. I continue to suffer from a very nasty cough, so apologies if my uh, voice is a bit uh, hoarse and my breathing is a bit labored. Uh, today I'd like to discuss what will undoubtedly be the winner of the Social Justice Warrior Award for this calendar year. I realize that the year is not over yet, but I think uh, we would be hard pressed to find somebody who could outdo uh, this current individual. Uh, this is a story that comes out of Queen's University uh, in Kingston, Ontario. Queen's University is a very reputable Canadian university and in this case a student at Queen's, her name is Anissa Rauhani. She's uh, Iranian by descent but uh, a non-Muslim woman uh, and in a second you'll see why that's uh, potentially relevant. She wanted to explore uh, the likely bigotry, racism, and intolerance that uh, she might face if she decided to don uh, the hijab, the Islamic headscarf. Uh, and so she, for 18 days, she wore the hijab and uh, kept notes of uh, how people treated her. Uh, several months ago, I don't remember the exact date, I actually saw her appear on a television show where she was inter interviewed about her experiences and I was uh, simply astonished by the conclusions that she arrived at. But let's uh, go through her experiment in details. Uh, so when you set up an experiment, a scientific experiment, uh, you basically have an idea uh, that uh, a particular set of data patterns would be in support of your hypothesis and then of course uh, the specific data patterns that would falsify your hypothesis. Uh, that's precisely what uh, is known as Popper's falsification principle. So the idea is that if you can't falsify a hypothesis, then it is not within the realm of science. Right? That's part of the scientific method. And so this lady decided to uh, don the hijab and went out and, as I said, record people's reactions. And to her surprise, maybe to her dismay, she, uh, because it contradicted uh, her a priori narrative, she found that people were unbelievably kind, civil, respectful, gentle with her. And so you might think that at that point, this falsifies her starting working hypothesis that you know Canadian society is laden with intolerance towards uh, Muslims. Um, on the contrary, she might think, boy, what a tolerant, kind, gentle society where uh, people are accepted of all faiths and races and ethnicities and backgrounds and sexual orientations. But then that would uh, damage her narrative of victimology. So, you ready? The kindness, respect, tolerance, uh, gentleness that people exhibited towards her were a manifestation of, wait for it, wait for it, racism and bigotry. It turns out, uh, according to her logic, based on some uh, theory that she uncovered, um, that sometimes when people are very racist and intolerant and bigoted, they'd like to suppress that, they'd like to hide that, they'd like to overcompensate for those uh, latent uh, feelings by being overtly nice. And so the fact that people were being very kind and respectful to her, uh, she could only come to one conclusion, Islamophobia. So let's recap. If she wore the hijab and people were intolerant, disrespectful, and mean to, towards her, that would be an example of Islamophobia. If she donned the hijab and people were respectful, kind, and tolerant towards her, that would also be a manifestation of Islamophobia. So it turns out that all roads lead to Islamophobia, bigotry, and racism, and the mindset of a social justice warrior. There you go, people. Slowly we inch toward the abyss of lunacy. Have a great weekend. Subscribe if you haven't done so already. Tell your friends about it. Talk to you soon. Ciao.